Hi there. So today I needed to sit down and go through our joint household budget uh, so that I could have a conversation with my husband. We do this every few months about how our money is working for us, what we put in, what we put out, if any of our bills have changed, things like that, so that we can figure out if we're going to need to put some more money into certain pots or not. So I thought I'd film what I'm doing uh, to get ready for this conversation with my husband. And so if that's something you're interested in, stick around. All right, so before I get started, I just wanted to give a brief background on uh, who we are. So my name is Jennifer, my husband's name is Mark. I am gonna be 50 in July, my husband's already 50. And we are a two income family with no kids. We do have one little dog. Um, and uh, we both met each other late in life, so we didn't really have a clue on how to combine finances and pay bills and get ahead and not go into debt and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I created a spreadsheet, which um, will be in the next uh, little bit here, uh, that basically helped us plan for how to combine our income when we moved in together uh, so that we both felt uh, satisfied that we weren't having to give everything away and that we still had our own money to do what we wanted with uh, to have a little bit more independence and uh, and still feel like an adult I guess you could say because that's what we were used to so um, so this spreadsheet that I'll be showing shortly uh, is something that I created to uh, help us uh, figure that out and uh, as I mentioned in the intro um, I am going to be having a date night with my husband uh, budgeting date night to talk about some recent changes to our budget and how we want to go forward with that. Uh, so I thought, well, let's just film it and uh, film how I prep for that and go from there. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, this is the budget plan spreadsheet that I created in Google Sheets to help my husband and I figure out how to manage our inflow and expenses as a household. And um, so what we did was we sat down when we moved in together uh, and really had a long discussion, uh, also with Mark's dad, because uh, his dad was really great at budgeting, um, how this was going to work, because he was used to getting his own income and managing his own expenses, and what he had left over was what he had left over, he would just do what he wanted with. And for me, it was the same, but I like to have a little bit more detail. I was a zero-based budgeter, so every dollar needed to have a job. Um, and it was a very tight budget, um, and I, and, but it worked for me for the most part. For my husband, he would have a few sinking or savings accounts that he would put things in like for travel and for insurance, uh, but he also, it was a loose uh, thing. He would pull from one to cover things for the other. He had a savings account that he liked to just, it was just fun money for him. He could spend money how he wanted to. Um, but sometimes he overspent. And so he'd pull from his other savings accounts. So he never went into debt, but he, um, always had, um, he, he never really had savings. He never watched anything grow. And for me, it was the opposite. Uh, because my budget was so tight, I didn't allow to have, um, flexibility or account for things if money, uh, if a bill was more expensive. I also didn't have any savings because as a, everything was just so tight and I would overspend. Um, so I had a little bit of credit card debt. It was really, it was really a, a tough. So his dad sat us down and said, Hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you, you know, bring in your income, don't combine everything, you know, figure out what your household expenses are to run your household Think about what your priorities are as a couple for your um, savings goals, like, you know, what plans that you have for each other, and then proportionately split that um, so that, you know, uh, the person who's making higher income puts a little bit more in than the person who's making a lower income. And then whatever's left over, we would have to do whatever we wanted with. And... Um, we thought, well, that's kind of brilliant. Why don't we do that? So we opened up a checking account and we opened up a savings account as a couple. And then we kept our own checking accounts and our own savings accounts. And that's uh, how it started. And then I built the spreadsheet to kind of help us guide each other through what we know we have to pay every month, what our 
our plans are for savings as a couple and then whatever was left over we could do what we want with so here i determined what our annual income was by taking our paychecks and times in them by the number of times we get paid so for example my husband gets paid bi-weekly so he gets 26 paychecks a year on average, his minimum paycheck is $1,900 a month. Sometimes it's more when he's on the pager. Um, he work, He's an electrician, so um, sometimes he has to be on, on the pager. Um, so, But on minimum, he's paid $1,900 a paycheck. So times that by 26, he, makes, he brings home $49,400 a year. This number here is after tax and other things have already been taken off. For me, I'm paid uh, twice a month and uh, my middle of the month paycheck is slightly higher than the end of the month paycheck and that's because i bought an e-bike through a loan program at work they were trying to get people to come to work in a more sustainable way and so i bought an e-bike for like 800 bucks online and gave them the receipt they reimbursed me and i just pay 35 dollars a month for two years and it's interest free so I have another about 10 to 11 months to pay. And then once I've done that, then my paychecks will be even uh, every payday. So I take home after all my taxes and everything is taken off uh, $43,680 a year. So our combined take home pay is $93,080. So to proportionally split that out, what I do was I take my husband's income, annual income, and divide that by our total amount here and determine that he makes 53% of that income and I make 47% of that income. So that's how we determined how to split our joint savings goals and our joint expenses to run the household. So it's fair. We didn't want to do 50-50 because then obviously he would be benefiting. He'd have a lot more savings and I would be struggling every month. Um, I wouldn't have any savings. Um, so this is what worked for us. So how did we determine how much money to put aside, like what was required for our joint expenses and savings and stuff like that? Uh, like how much of this, this take home pay uh, we could keep for ourselves and how much had to go into our accounts. So we first factored in all our monthly expenses, our hydro, cable, mortgage, pet insurance, our gas bill, uh, our cell phones and our investments because we both have we both would love to retire by the time we're 60 so we have about 10 years to go um, and so we are just kind of wanting a place to set it and forget it not worry about it not be tempted to spend it so we put it in our joint checking account and then we have a buffer which is just $25 a month so that we're not completely zero based budgeting we have a little bit of a buffer in there in case one bill is over or an expense comes in that we forget about, which kind of happens a bit. <laughs> um, so to what I, how I, how that looks is, um, for example, our hydro bill is $88 a month. And I had to get these two balances here. I've just created a formula, uh, where I take that $88, I divide it by two for my husband cause he's paid on average twice a month. And then I times that by the percentage he brings in, like he earns, which is 53% here. And then I round it up to the nearest dollar because I don't like to look at spreadsheets with change in it. Um, so $23 a paycheck is what he would put towards um, our hydro bill and $21 for me because I'm paid twice a month. And then my percentage is 47% and then round it up. So about approximately $88 a month and that covers it. Now my husband does get paid uh, an extra paycheck twice a year. Um, and so when we, when that happens, any of that extra paycheck will um, go towards our sinking funds or it'll top up other things for like uh, for groceries or something like that. Um, and he's, he's okay with that. Um, that's what he wants to do. So that's what I've determined there. Now there's some things that I don't, um, I, I don't proportionately split. And that is his tax-free savings account because he's got a set amount, $50 every payday. So even if he's paid three times a, a month, $50 goes towards his tax-free savings account and a hundred dollars, uh, twice a month goes to mine. So I don't proportion that out. Those are our own set limits that we decided uh, he's comfortable $50 a paycheck. I'm comfortable with $100 a paycheck. 
Our mortgage, we pay uh, $1,200 every two weeks. I've just right now just put it at $2,400 because that's mostly what it is. And then on the months where it is uh, twice a month or we have to pay three times a month, then we usually have enough money to cover that with my husband's uh, check here. And that's where these other things will uh, factor in there. Uh, these other, uh, if, if he's over contributed, these things will we'll go towards that $1,200 payment. And then from there, we also decided what our variable expenses were as a household. So we knew food and drink was a must. So that is like groceries, things like that and fuel for the vehicles. When we started uh, with this, we just had one vehicle. So it was really easy to budget for insurance and for um, fuel. Uh, it was a lot lower than this, uh, but now that we have two vehicles, we have decided to, um, we had to increase that a little bit uh, per month. And so I just average uh, averaged it out. So these totals here are average over the year based on running two vehicles um, uh, for the fuel, for the fuel anyway, for gas, he has, uh, he uses, uh, his Jeep is uh, only part of the year that we cover that and then the rest is his motorcycle. So that kind of, that's why it's a little bit lower, 325 per month. And then our joint savings, we had a whole bunch of joint savings, but we eventually narrowed it down to the must haves, which was our property tax, our trailer insurance, which is for our utility trailer and our house insurance, because those are annual bills that are always going to come out. And then our priority for us is to always have money in a vacation account because we want to be able to travel somewhere, whether it's just a mini vacation somewhere like over to Vancouver or down to Seattle or something bigger every few years like Ireland or England or, you know, a cruise or something like that. So that's uh, what we determine there. So these items here are all um, are all split proportionately. We have a minimum here. So our house insurance was fifteen fifty a year. Uh, I took that 1550 and divided it by 12 and rounded up. So it was an even number. And we have to put in on average 129 per month. Our vacation is 5,000 a year is on average is what we would like to see. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but um, it's about $415 a month. Um, trailer insurance, this one's easy peasy, uh, $50 a year. So it's like a dollar each, $5 a month and our property tax is $41 a year. Now this, or 4,100, gosh, wouldn't that be nice if it was $41 a year? It's $4,100 this year, um, uh, and, it, and it, well, that's what we banked on and, and um, or budgeted for, and then it, it is going up, so I do uh, try to increase that. So on average, it's $342, um, and then we just, again, split that out proportionately here. You'll see that um, I've split that out proportionately. Um, and then what our joint sinking funds are, and I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so my husband has his plan savings that he always wants to make sure he has money in, uh, for his motorcycle insurance, his Jeep insurance, his personal vacation and his personal, uh, car maintenance. Um, we decided to throw in his vacation and Jeep maintenance into our joint, um, amounts uh, or into his joint account. Um, because, uh, he just found that he was spending it. And then when insurance would come, he'd be like, Oh no, I didn't plan for that. So I take a percentage I, I, out of the money that he puts in each paycheck. I put, I put $75 aside for these two things, every payday for him. Um, his Jeep insurance is $960 on average a year. So I've just averaged that out by divided that by 26 and rounded up. So $37 a paycheck goes towards that. And for his motorcycle insurance, um, he has his private insurance and insurance, uh, for one bike. And, um, that's $918 a year on average. So, uh, averaging that out is $35. And again, I don't proportionally split this because that's his own bill. So that's $35 a paycheck. For mine, my, uh, I have my car insurance for my Kia and that's about $1,075 a year. So I just, uh, can split that out with my, I don't proportion that because that's my expense. Um, so that is about $45 or $90 a month, uh, towards my car insurance. And then, um, I like to always have $55 a paycheck in my wallet 
and then I have $210 I allow myself for my sinking funds. That's what I do right now. Um, so that's what it looks like there. And again, this is my stuff, uh, my cash budgeting here that I keep track of. So my full paycheck I include up here. Um, for my husband, I just proportion out what our joint savings and joint expenses are to run the household plus his $75 that I use towards his insurance and his uh, personal savings for vacation. That's what's in there. And then whatever is above and beyond that is for him to do whatever he wants with in his account. Um, I don't keep track of it. But for me, I do like to keep track of everything that I'm spending and break down um, because that helps me to stay accountable and not go into debt and, and really think about what I'm spending on and what my priorities are. So that's why it's a little bit different there. That's why even though he makes more money than me, what I contribute is higher than what he contributes. And, and that's because again, most, some of this money goes into my own account and my own wallet and cash envelopes. Um, things like pet care and dates and activities, these are two variable monthly expenses that he and I both sat down that we decided that we wanted to put in each payday or each month for our dog and for our dates and activities for us as a couple. So that's why we both contribute to these. And these are in um, a cash envelope. Um, right now uh, for Toby, his rolls over. So whatever money I, we don't use, it just rolls over, but it's $100 a month that goes into that. And our dates and activities, again, is $100 a month. That goes into a, an envelope. What we don't use right now, we put towards Ireland because that helps us kind of, that's a goal that we have of $10,000. That's what we de determined at the beginning of the year. If we didn't spend it, we would put it towards Ireland to help us reach that goal because we don't have a lot of extra money to put towards other things uh, outside of this. So how did we determine what our joint sinking funds were and how much we wanted to put towards that? Well, we sat down again and we decided that bulk buys because groceries are expensive and we were putting everything in bulk buy and our groceries, including household products for cleaning and stuff like that. So we decided to separate that and create a sinking fund for bulk buys and for household. Uh, health was another one that was we were pulling out of our grocery fund a lot for like uh, Tylenol, Band-Aids, things like that. So we created a different uh, uh, sinking fund for our joint uh, expenses for health so that we have a cash envelope for our health. Home decor um, is to help us with um, if I want to decorate our new curtains or something like that. I wanted to have a little bit of play money for that. So I have a, a sinking fund for home decor that we both contribute to. Household, again, that I spoke about that just a few seconds ago. Birthdays, that is mainly for our own birthdays. So for my husband and I, we put, we like to give each other a gift of $150 um, each. So we put $300 a year aside for birthdays. We did have our own families and that in there, and it was really easy to do uh, at that point. But as the nieces and nephews are getting older, we want to determine how much we put in ourselves for our own families for money and gifts. Um, so uh, we decided to take them out of our what we contribute together and just do that individually. So I have my own birthdays envelope here and then Mark's uh, money for his birthdays just comes out of it, what's left over after he puts in what he has to put in. Christmas, again, we did have all our families contributing for Christmas, like we put in everything into one Christmas envelope for all our families, but you know, we have different priorities for what we want to spend. Some, you know, sometimes we don't spend a lot, sometimes we do. So we're just using this to cover our own, which is $200 each, and then $50 for miscellaneous. So if we want to buy decorations or a little thing for our dog for Christmas, then that's in there. And then everything above and beyond that will just come out of our own personal money. An emergency fund is important for us. So we have that as part of our sinking funds. I usually put an average of $50 a month in right now, but that may change. Um, so that's why it's in a more flexible sinking funds category. House projects is something it's like, whereas home decor is my envelope, house project is my husband's envelope. And that is for things where he wants to do around the house, like landscaping, maintenance, uh, upkeep, things like that. So 
uh, that's a house project and uh, we have that online right now so that he can always see how much money he has online in the bank to spend when he needs to do a house project or when he wants to do landscaping. And then one month ahead is another one that we decided we wanted to get one month ahead so that we weren't feeling like we were living paycheck to paycheck and we had at least one month in the bank of our expenses should anything happen. So that's what we're working on now. My sinking funds are, uh, so I'll, well, I'm, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit here, so I'll just go back. So that's what we determined was our joint sinking funds. And so we had money left over at the end. And so it was determined that 1600 of, of all these expenses, $1,650 was coming from my husband paycheck and then the rest uh, of his paycheck, which was $1,900. So $250 a paycheck goes into his own personal account to do whatever the heck he wants with. For me, uh, mine is, I put my full paycheck in, which is $1,790. I just go with the lower number um, because I know I'm guaranteed that. And then anything above and beyond that will just go towards um, uh, like if I get $50, like, sorry, my $17.90, my middle of the month paycheck is $18.50. That $18.50, I put that extra $60, $60 into our joint sinking funds to cover anything else that's coming up, whether it's food, fuel, if we're running low on that, or to top up any of our priority uh, sinking funds, like our property tax and insurances, things like that. So that's what I do. But I give myself $210 a paycheck for my own personal sinking funds, which is over here, which is beauty, bike locker parking, my birthday family gifts, business, clothing, electronics, fun money, hobbies, running gear, 50th birthday, car maintenance, Christmas for my family, my own emergency fund, my own personal vacation, my tax account and tires. So my tax account and business come out of my casual job paycheck, which I haven't factored in here and I won't because I don't know how long I'll have this job. I never know how much I make, so I don't put that in my budget. I track that off budget. And then um, for my wallet, I always have $55, which is coffee and snacks, dining out and miscellaneous. These here, the money that goes in there is going to vary, except for my personal vacation. I put $50 a month into that. Gar always, I put $50 a month into that. Uh, these here will vary. I will always put $5 into miscellaneous, but for coffee and snacks, I tend to put $30 into dining out and $20 into coffee and snacks, but that may change if I know I'm gonna have a heavy dining out week, if I'm gonna go out for uh, lunch or dinner with friends. And that's basically it. So that's how it works. So every payday, my husband transfers $16.50 into our joint account. And, um, and then I transfer in $17.90 and I then t uh, pay the bills. Um, hopefully this all makes sense. Um, I, if you're not a spreadsheet person, this might be a little bit overwhelming, but that's uh, how it worked for us. And um, so moving forward, now that we're in a second quarter of the year, or we're going into a new a phase of the year, we now know that some of our budget uh, is uh, going to be changing. And so I have to plan and prepare a new spreadsheet uh, to just to determine what this what this is going to look like and talk to my husband about how that's going to look. So let's just do that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this spreadsheet and I'm just going to call it uh, I'm just going to rename it and call it draft budget. And then I'm just going to make sure that I'm in that. And so what I'm going to do here is for my husband's paycheck, I know that he makes two thousand dollars minimum now. So I'm going to update that. And uh, for my income, I know that I make um, 1890 at the beginning of the month and 1840 in the middle of the month. So that's my take home pay. So that's changed our total to 96, dollars $96, in take home pay. I'm not sure if our percentages have changed, but I'm just going to check that out now. So let me just get this calculator up here. Let me see if I can move it. All right, so I'm gonna go take, um, do with my husband. So 52,000 divided by $96,760 equals 53, so I round up, so 54%. It will be for my husband's uh, proportional split and mine will drop to 46. All right, 
So that should change, that did change some of the formulas here now on how that looks. So we are a little bit, my husband's now short by $25 and I have a $20 inflow. We are gonna be changing a few things here. So let's just see how that works. So, well, right off the bat, I know that I'm gonna update this to the lowest amount of money that I get paid per month, which is 1840. So I'll put 1840 in here. And I'll leave my husband's for now because this is what I need to determine how much he's going to put in for his. All right, so hydro has stayed the same and our cable and internet's the same. All of these have stayed the same in our uh, joint expenses. Um, for our debt repayment, my line of credit debt repayment minimum of $200 is staying the same and our windows is staying the same at this time. For our variable expenses, I know our food and drink has gone up. We now have to put in $500 or we're trying to put in $500 a month towards that because it's just getting way too expensive. And our gas is at 325 and I'm gonna be putting it at 350 because again, it is going up and that extra $25 will cover two tanks of gas. All right, so that's changed a few things. Our property tax, ugh, our property tax went up. We are now going to be paying, I think, $4,350, um, but I'm going to put $4,400. That's what our property tax is going to be for this year. We didn't budget enough for that, um, so that is going to be very unfortunate. Uh, so things are going to be changing there. So uh, what I did here was I just updated the formula from $4,100 to $4,400. And that changed the totals. Our trailer insurance stayed the same. Vacation, I'm not touching that. Our house insurance. Now our house insurance went up as well to 1890. So I'm going to change that total here to 1890. And that's going to change the amounts here. Our joint sinking funds, I'm just going to keep the same for now. My husband's motorcycle insurance. Now he has a second bike. And he will probably insure that. Um, so for six months rather than for a full year. So his last bike for the full year ended up being 770. So I'm going to change that to 770 plus his 1418 for his um, annual private insurance. And then I'm just going to add in the $500 just so he knows that if he wants to put extra money aside each month to cover insuring his uh, motorcycle, uh, set it and forget it kind of thing, I'm going to add that there and then it, it's there for him um, to look at and he can make that decision what he wants to do. Uh, Jeep insurance, his Jeep insurance has stayed the same, his vacation he doesn't wanna change and his uh, bike maintenance, or Jeep and bike maintenance he doesn't wanna change. Um, these are annual figures here. That's why uh, it's a little different than the monthly. Uh, for my insurance, I'm I, that hasn't changed. My wallet money hasn't changed and my sinking funds, I don't want to change. I'm really quite happy with having $210 um, into my sinking funds. If I could put a little bit more in that $29, I will, but I'm not going to right now. So what my husband has to decide is, does he want to put in the extra $100 um, into, like add that to his uh, paycheck? So he's putting $17.50 aside or does he want to um, eliminate that, not put in his extra $500 uh, for his second bike insurance and handle that separately? And then he would just have to put in an extra $81 um, a paycheck, which to be honest, what I'll probably do is this $29 here is just contribute to that. So um, so it ev evens itself out. So he would that would be down to maybe adding an extra $50 a paycheck or $51 a paycheck in there. So bumping that up to 1700. So what I'm going to do is because I need to discuss this with him, I'm going to re-add that $500 back in there. And down here to discuss, I'm going to put um, adding $500 for second bike insurance and then increasing uh, per pay contribution. Um, and I will discuss with him higher uh, property tax and higher, oops, higher house insurance. 
I'm just going to unbold that because I don't, I like to do this as I go. And then the other thing that uh, was different was increasing um, food and fuel amounts. So that's kind of how that looks. That's kind of how I determine everything um, and see how we, how it goes. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, that is it uh, for this. So we'll just jump back to the desk and hopefully you found this helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you did. I'm not a spreadsheet guru, I can't make it pretty. So this is just what works for me. I leave the pretty spreadsheets to the professionals and I buy their stuff. Um, but this is just what works for me to help me proportionally split. So hopefully you found this helpful. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too long or too boring for all you spreadsheet lovers out there and people like me who love to see how people handle and manage their money. Thank you, thank you for sticking around this long and all the way to the end. Let me know in the comments below how you manage your household budgets. Are you a proportionate income splitter? Do you just put everything in one pot? How do you guys handle your ha your finances if you're in a two income household or a three income household or however it works for you? Um, I don't, you know, as I mentioned, we don't have any kids. We just have Toby. So our budget looks a little bit different. Some of our priorities are a little bit different than others would be. Everything about budgeting is personal. So what works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. That said, I do always love to watch other people's videos to um, see how they do things. Because if there's a way that I can improve, I'd love to do that. Or if something works for you and I see how successful it's been in a video, um, if you're a fellow YouTuber as well, then I'm all for it. So so um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't considered subscribing already, please do. Um, I really appreciate every single one of you who uh, join me on this journey. And um, as I said before, I try to put out content at least once a week, whether it's a budget with me video, a cash stuffing video, monthly recap, things like that. If that's content you're interested in, then um, you know I'd love for you to join the community. And uh, yeah, I'll link a playlist up here of a previous budget with me's in case you're interested to see how we've uh, progressed since I posted my first video back in December of 2023. Um, so until the next time, bye for now.